Luke, do you have any sugar? In the cupboard above the stove. Hmm. Joe, would you mind putting a couple of cubes in that for me, please? No problem. Would you like white sugar or brown sugar? Brown sugar, please. Ah, you picked the healthier one. Actually, Joe, brown sugar is just as unhealthy as white. Not according to my wife. Oh, oh well, then I guess if your wife says it's healthier, it must be. But I would argue that it's equally as unhealthy. You see, Joe, they make brown sugar by adding molasses to white sugar. And therefore, the insulin and the sugar spike is just the same between the two. Oh, now there may be some iron and a few trace minerals, so therefore your wife would be correct to say that it's slightly healthier. But I would also be right to say that it's equally as unhealthy. So it's just white sugar with molasses in it, like, uh, like what they put in pork and beans. And... Exactly, Joe. <coughs> I think it's because he had sushi last night. You and me, we didn't have sushi, and we're fine. Um, could be. You know, I told the guy, wait till we're back in Vancouver. I mean, why would you wear sushi in Manitoba? <laughs> it's the prairies. How could it be fresh? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. You know, we're running short of time here, Luke. So, either you're going to help us, or we're going to have to move on. I understand. I don't think you do. Here's what I'd like you to do. You're going to tell me you're going to stop messing around. You're going to tell me everything you know, and you're going to do it now. If you do those things, I'll let you live. If you don't, then I'm going to have to fillet you. I'll take you apart, piece by piece. I'll start with the parts you need the least, and I'll lead my way up to the parts you need the most. And when you find out some of the parts you need the least, I don't think you're going to be happy. I'll tell you what you want to know. Anything you want. But please, please, don't kill me.
Are you Luke Peters? Yeah, but please don't shoot me. We won't shoot you if you cooperate. Okay. Why don't you put some clothes on? Can you hand me the towel? Why are you guys here? You don't know why we're here? Maybe it doesn't work that way. What good could he be if he doesn't even know that? I mean, he wasn't even ready for us at all. And I thought he would have done something, well, something a little small. We have any knives nearby? A gun? No. Maybe it's just like that in the movies. Um, can I ask what you guys are talking about? We'll tell you. First, you have to get dressed, though. Can I go into the bedroom? Sure. Oh, nice. <laughs> and you don't mind, eh? No. You guys think I could have a little privacy? Sure. <sighs> Don't want you emailing the police. You think this guy has the police's email in his computer? Uh, well, we don't want him emailing somebody and telling them to call the police or, or updating his case pagey thing. Well? Well, what? You gonna get his phone? Oh yeah. You made me forget. All the second guessing you're doing? All right, come on, come on, give me your phone. God, you ever have to, have to work with anyone that's giving you a hard time? No, I don't even have a job right now. Well, this could be your lucky day. <laughs> I think you guys have the wrong guy. I, I'm really a nobody. I don't know why you're, you're doing this. We have the right guy. We need you to do some work for us. You guys need me to do some work for you? Yeah. You can even work from home. And just for today if you do your part. You guys. I'm just a performer. I don't see I don't see how I can be a help to men like you. Our boss is convinced you can be a help to us. In fact, he's so convinced he's on his way over here right now. Let's hope he's right. Let's hope you don't waste our time. Luke? You listening in there? I'm surprised he fit through there. There he goes. Yeah, well, he's, he's limping. Joey. Can I just shoot him? You know you can't.
Can I help you? Please, you have to let me know. I have to use your phone and call the police. What's going on? There's some men with guns and they're, they're chasing me. Do they know you're here? I, I think I lost them. Can I come in, please? Do you see them? No. My cell phone's upstairs. Can you get it? Someone's there. Someone's home. They're going to be suspicious if I don't answer the door. What's your name? Luke. Luke. Hide in here. Yes. What can we do for you? Yes, we're police detectives. We just lost a man we've been chasing. A dangerous fugitive. Fugitive? Yes, that he came right this way. You folks didn't have anyone knock on your door here in the last little while? What did this fugitive do? A uh, bank robber. He just robbed a bank. He's armed and very dangerous. And you're detectives? Yes, sir. Did you see anything? Do you have some ID you could please show me? Sure. Let me just get my wallet out here. Upstairs. He's in here somewhere. You got it. I don't see him up here. You got a really sweet bidet, though. See what you made us do? They seemed like nice people too. Now they're dead. That's on you. Nobody had to get hurt. I'm sorry. Get up. I'll clean up. Don't do anything stupid. Don't want anyone else getting hurt now, do we? Take the long way around the field. The very longest, most indirect route back to your house. If you try and trick me, I'll know. I've done this before, Luke. Well, I'll take you around to the end of the street. Trust me, the last thing you want is the cops showing up at your door looking for us. If I even smell a cop, I'll blow off your dick with my gun. He'll blow your dick. Hey, we're trying to maintain an air of menace here. What'd you do with the bodies? Threw them in the guest room closet. Whip up the blood real quick. Well, get some shit over. Their wallet. Got some nice jewelry. Hey, check this out. Hey, little monkey earrings. My girlfriend's gonna love them. And I left them a little heroin baggie. Empty syringe. 
Nobody better come around asking questions. Eh, I'm sure we got at least a day or two. Nice day out. Yeah. Hopefully we get done soon. You and I can enjoy the afternoon. You think I'll get to enjoy the afternoon too? Oh, it remains to be seen. Oh, God, my allergies are just killing my eyes. Luke, do you have any eye drops for Danny? Yeah, there's just some in the in the bathroom there. Have a seat there, bud. Okay, this time, please take off your shoes and socks. Take them off. Toss them over there. Good. All right, hands behind your back so I can cuff you. Behind your back. Good. Legs tight against the legs of the chair, please. I'm going to tape you in place. Please don't. We didn't have to do this. But you made us kill two people that had nothing to do with any of this. So we're already having a bad day. And it's not even noon. It's too bad if this isn't what you want. So from now on, Unless I ask you a question, you keep your mouth shut. Do you understand? Good. Oh, that's better. Hey, thanks, man. Now that you're taking care of your dry eyes... Yeah, well, you don't know what it's like to have bad allergies. They sting. Hey, Luke, you have allergies? No. <laughs> well, you're lucky, man. Danny, do you think you can find us a couple of wine glasses? Oh, you got it. Let's get back to this. You've really sidetracked us this morning. Let's get back on track. I'm sorry. Good. Keep that in mind. Now, the man we work for... He's going to be here shortly. We have some questions for you in the meantime. Now, I want you to understand something. Me and Danny, we may not look like the brightest men in the world. Hey, speak for yourself. But we do ask people questions for a living. We're really good at spotting liars. We have a feel for it, you know, like a, a sixth sense. Now, if you set off that sixth sense, bad things are going to happen to you. Dick and gun, Luke. Dick and gun. Well, better gag him. What do you mean, better gag him? first next time. We always forget.
makes this harder. Now, Luke, if you're going to cooperate, we can lift you back out. It will hurt. Okay. Don't struggle. Hurt you out now. We're going to take your gag off. Now, if you start screaming, making a fuss, we're going to put it back on. Then Danny and me, we're going to think of something much worse to do to you. Something you'll recover from so easy, you understand? No. Okay. Ah. Now, before you think about trying to run away again, I want you to understand something. A lot of the pain you're feeling in your feet right now is from all those little shards of broken glass that have lodged their way into your flesh. Sorry. Now, you try and get up, run away, any pressure you put on your feet, it's going to hurt like a bitch. Oh God. Stay calm. Stay calm and you just might get through this. <laughs> Why are you doing this? I haven't done anything to you. I haven't done anything wrong. Stay calm. We know you haven't done anything to us. We know that. It's just we're down to the wire here. We can't afford to chase your ass around town anymore. We need the kind of cooperation that only fear provides. Fear is a tremendous motivator, and it creates this really useful type of eager cooperation. We know you didn't do anything to us, we know that. Yeah, well, except for run away. Oh. oh, you should not have run away. We just need your help. How can I help you? Well, you work as a performer, is that right? Yes. Well, I used to, but I don't anymore. Oh, what, you tired of your little gift or something? Well, no, it seems a little weak to me. My gift? Yeah, I think Danny's referring to your psychic gift. My psychic gift? Yeah. Yeah, can you really do that shit? You know, like, have visions, tell the future, stuff like that? You weren't there, Danny. In Mr. Zambrelli's party, this guy had everyone talking. People were freaking out. Even Mr. Z said there was no way this guy was faking. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know because I never get invited to his parties. You know, by the way, if you're going to call him Mr. Z, you better call him Mr. Z, you know, because we're in Canada. So what? You also say ZZ Top? I think we just reached an impasse on that one. Um, guys, I, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I, I, I'm not psychic. I, I just, I'm a magician. I do magic shows. It's a type of mental magic. So you're just a magician. Like, uh, like what they get for kids shows and stuff. Yeah, exactly. In fact, I used to do kids shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I untie my hands. No, please. <laughs> untie you. Hey, do we look stupid to you? No. No, I... I know I can't run away. I don't even want to stand up. Just untie my hands so I can show you something. Okay. In the closet over there, I've got some balloons. Can you go get them for me?
Holy. Very impressive. See, I, I'm just a children's performer. I, I'm not a psychic. What'd you learn to do this stuff? Yeah, I've just been doing it since I was a kid. I've worked with circuses. Circuses? No oh, shit. People still do that? Yeah, they still have circuses. Can you make another one? I guess. <laughs> Can you make a teddy bear? Yeah, okay. Thanks. You're welcome. What was that about? Ah, uh, well, my girlfriend's gonna pick me up at the airport, man. She loves balloons. She loves balloons. <laughs> what is she, eight? No, no, she's not eight. I mean, she's Japanese. Why let me go to waste? I, I don't mind, honest. Yeah, see, he doesn't mind. Fine. Can I please have some bandages? Danny, can you go into Luke's bedroom and find some strips of cloth to use for bandages just to stop the bleeding? Yeah, okay. So Luke, what made you decide to become a mental magician for adults? It, it pays really well. And my agent used to get me a lot of work at you know wealthy people's parties. That's some good money. Yeah, it is. I spent a lot of time working on it. You were very good. Thank you. See, the trick to doing a really good job at, at these parties is, you know, if you go there as a magician and you pull a rabbit out of a hat, people are impressed. But if you can go to a party like this and convince someone that you have psychic gifts, that you're talking to their dead relative or mother, well then they're odd. Well, how would that make them odd? It, not odd. Odd, like is in there in awe of you. Okay. Still, some of the things you did, they didn't seem like they'd be possible. You have some really nice shirts in there. So I ripped up your bed sheets instead. They should work. Good. Ah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Don't mention it. Ah. No. It's, it's also about reading people, being a good <sighs> judge of character and personality. Ah. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I would like Danny here. Um, he's not very well educated. I, I'm guessing, sorry, I'm guessing one of his parents died when he was really young. He, he's constantly being taken advantage of by women and has an abusive streak. Well, that's not hard to figure out. We did just torture you a bit, and who doesn't get taken advantage of by women? Well, I'd also say you either played football or rugby in high school. Yeah, rugby. You're getting a little better. Divorced? Yeah. Divorced? How'd you know that? It's, it's by the way he holds himself. You know, and he got so excited to get the balloons for his girlfriend, that means it's most likely a newer relationship for you to be that excited about it. And he also, he fidgets with his wedding ring finger, and that's the kind of habit you only build up if you're married for years. It seems pretty psychic to me. It's just about being, it's, it's about being observant. Just like how I know that you're doubting you being here is a good idea. You're right on that one. But if you were a little psychic and you could see that, maybe you'd just lie to make us go away. I'm not psychic. But if I was the kind of guy who believed in psychics, I'd be very wary of you being manipulative. C come on, you really think I can do that? Read people's auras? Tell the future? <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter what I think. Mr. Zemp really just pulled up. Looks like our boss is here. Come on, you guys, I, I need to go to a hospital. Soon. We gotta clean up, he's almost at the door.
Come on, you guys. I, I, I really gotta. Gentlemen, good morning. Morning, sir. Hey, Nick. What the hell happened to him? He, um, he got away. He made it to the neighbor's house. You let him get away to the neighbor's house? What are you two amateurs? That's just stupid. I'm sorry, Mick. I didn't think he'd be so skittish. Yeah, I, it I, seemed like he was cooperating. Mm -hmm. he, I don't know how, but he slipped through the window. So you're trying to tell me that when you invade someone's house, that you don't expect them to want to try and escape out through the window? Oh, come on. Oh, don't tell me. You didn't break in here and with your guns drawn and scare the shit out of this poor guy. Oh, you guys. I told you to hold him here until I got here, not hold him hostage. Sorry. I guess we might have been a little too aggressive. You think? And then somehow you managed to let him get out through the window. To be honest, I thought it was a higher drop. Yeah, and he, he seemed too scared to try and get away. It's totally our fault and we're real sorry, Mick. Are we safe here? We had to quiet a couple of the neighbors. You what? I can't believe you two! You morons! What? Ah. With all due respect, sir, you sent these two guys to, 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 into my house to kidnap me, to torture me? They killed my neighbors for what? For what? Why? Calm down. I know how this seems, but I wouldn't have sent these men here if I didn't need to. You have to help me. For what? My daughter's been kidnapped. I'm sorry to hear that. One of my enemies has kidnapped her. And I'm using all of my resources in Vancouver to track down the men that did this. She's been missing for a couple of weeks. And I'm using everything I have to find her. And now I'm grasping at straws. My rivals are organized criminals and kidnapping is nothing new to them. And I'm not sure if my people will find her in time. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope your daughter is okay. Yeah, you and me both. You and me both. Look, sir, I'm very sorry for what you're going through, but I can't help you. You have to. I rushed out here on the first plane this morning. My daughter's life is at stake, and I need your help. I'm not a psychic. I, I used to pretend to be psychic. People, when they throw parties, nice parties like yours, I'd go and pretend to be psychic. But I'm not psychic, it's just a show. Why are you saying this? Is this because of what my men did to you today? No. I'm, I'm just not psychic. He might be telling the truth. You were at the party, Joe. 
You heard what he did. Every guest left shocked at this man's readings for them. I mean, these, these are all well-educated and intelligent people. Do you think he managed to fool them all with magician's tricks or something? I just don't know why he'd be lying. Oh, I see. You killed two of his neighbors, and you already start to torture him, and you wonder why he doesn't want to help us? I'm telling you the truth. What's it going to take for you to help me? Uh, uh, do you want money? I can have a suitcase full of money here for you within the hour. How much is it going to cost for you to help me do this thing? There's no price. Please. Please, can you just leave me alone? If I could help you, I would. But there's nothing I can do for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not psychic. Danny? Uh. Why don't you just give it a try for me, Luke? Do you have any tarot cards or anything around here? I mean, something else? Some, what do you need in order to do a reading for me? There's nothing you can get from me. Because there's nothing I can do for you. This is the silliest thing I've ever heard of. I hope you're just giving us a hard time because of how the day started for you. I don't think either of us is going to be happy if uh, you can't help us. You go to hell. I'm not doing anything for you. Danny, too. the other one so that they match. Oh, that's sick. A one nipple, man. Oh, come on. We might as well cut off the other. Okay, okay, we will. Not in there right now, anyway. As long as you cooperate with us. Look, I'm sorry, we're... We just don't have the time, so we can't do this the nice way. I've got to get back to Vancouver as soon as possible. Please, stop. Then help me. Help me find my daughter. Help me find where my enemies are hiding her. I am not psychic. You hired me for a party with other performers over two years ago. You crazy bastard. Joe, Danny. Take the other one. They're just nipples. Trust me, this is better. Could be your fingers. Cutting off your fingers. They're harder to reattach. They never work properly. You don't pick up things with your nipples. I'll tell you what. And I'll go put this on ice, but that way if we're done here fast enough, you can take it to the hospital and get it like reattached. I don't know what you're going to tell them how you lost them. I'm telling you like you lost the safety word. Crap. Nobody move. I just lost it. Oh, wait. I fell 
on it, Luke. Ah, don't you worry. They give you like antibiotics at the hospital. I'm sure you won't get any infections. I'm sorry. I, I do this all the time. You know, it's, it's a, we've got about, you know, three, four hours or something. There we go. Good. Oh, not again. Oh, oh. Yeah, I got both your nipples. Yeah, don't you worry. Don't you worry. Whoa, 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 don't fall asleep on me. No fainting. We got a lot to do. Come on, Luke, wake up. Let's go. <laughs> okay, you can take the tape off. I think he's ready to cooperate. In the desk in the bedroom, there's a box of tarot cards. Can you get them? Okay, yeah, Joe. Here you go. Do your best to be accurate. I will. Your daughter is alive. Yeah? Are you sure? And this is for real? Yes. Okay, what's the next card say? She was taken by somebody speaking Spanish. Spanish, eh? Okay, yeah, uh, the next card. She's being kept against her will in a large red brick building. It's an old building, easily antique, a hundred years old, like an old estate sort of building. You two listening to this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, next card. She's in BC. BC? Where in BC? All I'm getting is BC. Are you for real, Luke? A, a few minutes ago, you couldn't do any of this. And now you're giving me all this information about my daughter? Are you bullshitting us right now? <laughs> no, sir. So you were lying before? Yes. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to be left alone. And then your, your, your guys got here and they were torturing me. And I didn't want to be forced to do anything for you. Okay, so what you just told me was the truth. Yes. I'm gonna need more information than that, Luke. Someone's here. It's a girl. She's driving a blue matrix. 
shit. What? Who's here, Luke? That's my girlfriend. We had plans to spend the day together. Please, please don't hurt her. I'm helping you. How long have you two been dating, Luke? We started dating just after I moved to Manitoba, so a year and a half ago. Uh, do you love her? Very much. Oh, good. I'd like you to do me a favor. When she knocks on the door, I want you to call out and tell her to come in. Okay. Joe, Danny, what have we got that uh, we could knock her out with? Um, I got some tranquilizer. I didn't tell you to bring that on this trip. Well, it's not for work. You snore loud. I needed to sleep. She's out of the car on her way to the door. Danny, get down there. I want it. It's, it's open. C come on in, hun. Hello? <laughs> this day's become considerably more complicated than I expected. I know, right? Any more guests to come, Luke? No. Okay, good. What would you like me to do with the girlfriend? Uh, take her down the basement, tie her up, and uh, make sure she stays quiet. But uh, keep her comfortable. Yes, sir. Hmm. Oh, love. It's a beautiful thing. So, would you do anything for your girlfriend, Luke? Are you a uh, one woman sort of man, or uh, yeah, do you keep something on the side? Hey, no, be honest. I won't tell anybody if you do. No, she's the only girl for me. Oh, I respect that. To be honest, I've always had a hard time having relationships with women. Hmm. So you gay? No. I I just had a lot of bad life experiences and that when I met Shauna, well, she she's my soulmate. She doesn't have anything to do with with this, so please don't threaten her. Okay, Luke, I appreciate how you feel about her. And I guarantee that no matter what happens between us, I won't hurt her. Thank you. I feel as strongly about my daughter as you do about your girlfriend, so that's why I won't. So is she okay down there? Oh, she's more than okay. There's already a blanket down there with like rose petals around it. Rose petals! Uh, sorry. So, uh, are we interrupting some special day? Yeah. I, I was gonna propose to her today. No shit. Oh. <laughs> Making the big mistake, eh? Yeah, but she's worth it. Wow. Well, we sure have bad timing today, don't we? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Luke. This hasn't been a very good day for anybody. But this day could still end well. You could still get that chance to propose. 
you just telling me that? No, no, no. No, look, I'm not such a bad guy. I mean, I admit I will do anything to protect my family, but I'm sure you would do anything as well to protect all the people that you love. Okay, well, let's, let's get through this then. Okay. Why don't you give me some more information about my daughter then, please? Yeah. Um, I can do that, but you, you're gonna have to tell me more about her just so I can, it makes it easier to seek her out on a spiritual level. Okay, I can do that. What does she look like? Well, well, she has her mother's good looks, thank God. <laughs> and uh, she has an excellent figure, and she plays a lot of volleyball and does all that yoga stuff. But, but she's also like her old man, I and mean, she can get into an awful lot of mischief and trouble. <laughs> How old is she? 31. Do you, do you have any of her possessions with you? It'd be, it'd be easier if I had something that she owned. Oh. But I wasn't expecting to have to bring anything. I wasn't even considering the fact you might need something. Hey Mick, didn't she give you that tie for Christmas? Oh yeah, she did. Yeah, would this help? Yeah, it might. Okay. So, how come you came here to Manitoba? I mean, my God, it's so damn cold here in the winter. Oh, I, I, c I couldn't afford a place in Vancouver, and uh, I, I, I didn't want to you know, grow old in a one-room apartment. <laughs> I can understand that. Well, small apartments are like jail cells. I mean, you can't even turn around in them. I'm not getting anything from this. Like. Really? Nothing? Maybe, maybe if we had a, if I could have a, a few minutes break. I'm, I'm really out of it. I'm, I'm lightheaded and if I had a couple minutes, that might be easier. Okay, uh, but just for a couple of minutes. And, uh, I'm really thirsty. Is there any way I could make myself a drink? Okay, um, how about this? How about you get yourself a drink and uh, get each of us one too. I'm sure the guys would appreciate it. We've been up and moving since very early this morning. Uh, yes, please. Hey, Danny, why don't you uh, cut his legs loose and keep him company in the kitchen? Oh, yes, sir. sometimes. Hey, what the hell's with that god-awful ugly tie? Well, my girlfriend made it for me. It's handmade. It gives me good luck. And you don't, sir. We're, we're very professional. It's true. Even if Danny is kind of a jackass. Fine. Just want to behave. I will, sir. So it's the Mexicans, huh? 
They have been making a push into the city. This is what we're thinking. It's not good. I don't know. You better not hurt her. They won't, sir. They, they know who you are. They just want money. You know, that won't matter if we find them in time. Oh, we will, sir. You ready to give this another shot, Luke? Just a moment. <laughs> This day just keeps getting better and better. If you're gonna puke on anything, puke on that tie. I think I'm getting something. Yeah? What? I'm really sorry, Mr. Zambrelli. But I know how the mob works, and you weren't going to let me live. Uh, that's not true, Luke. I just want help looking for my daughter. I, I, I don't need to see you dead. You're a smart guy. We'll just leave here, and you'll keep quiet. I wish I could believe you, but I don't. Put your gun down, Joe. Put your gun down, Joe. You work for me, Joe. Lower your gun. Put it down. Now, kick it over there. Listen to him, Joe. Now, Luke, we can work this thing out. Hey, you finish this for me, and you can walk away with that suitcase full of money and your life. This could work out well for you. You know, don't make yourself a target. I don't want your money. I just want to live. And I want my girlfriend to live too. So you stay there. <sighs> Face down, Joe. Good, Joe. You really want to do this, Luke? Stay there. Don't you freaking move! You little prick! God. know all those things about me. Well, I told you, ma'am, you have strong spiritual vibrations. If your vibrations are so strong, how come we don't have another kid? Well, maybe it has something to do with the fact that your cord isn't thick enough to provide the proper voltage. Did you have any ex-wives, kid? No. I've always had bad luck with women. Hmm. Me too. Uh, can I do a reading for you before I go? Oh, not right now. Maybe after the party. Everybody tells me that uh, you're amazing at what you do. Digging up everybody's secrets. Um, I have a few guests here that uh, would be rather unhappy if you started digging up mine. Oh, Mr. Big Shot. Hey, honey, you should give me your card before you go. Well, in my profession, you get to be pretty good at keeping secrets. Oh, that's good. Anyway, I better go and find my daughter so that uh, we can cut the cake. Wow. She's beautiful. You motherfucker! What an asshole! Nobody has ever put a knife up to my throat before! We're not gonna be gentle anymore. 
I understand. Good. Your tea's ready, Mick. Bring it over here, Joe. How long was I out for? You've been keeping us waiting about an hour. <laughs> We've also been waiting for Danny to stop puking. He hasn't, though. Luke, do you have any sugar? Yeah, there's some in the, in the cupboard above the stove. Okay. Joe, would you mind putting a couple of teaspoons in there for me? <laughs> You know, we're running short of time here, Luke. So, either you're gonna help us or we're gonna have to move on. I understand. I don't think you do. Here's what I'd like you to do. You're gonna tell me you're gonna stop messing around. You're gonna tell me everything you know and you're gonna do it now. If you do those things, I'll let you live. If you don't, then I'm gonna have to fillet you. I'll take you apart, piece by piece. I'll start with the parts you need the least, and I'll lead my way up to the parts you need the most. And when you find out some of the parts you need the least, I don't think you're gonna be happy. I'll tell you what you want to know. Anything you want. But please, please, don't kill me. Good. Now, tell me where I can find my daughter. Are you sure that he can? Police have psychics who work with them all the time. You tell me now. I just need one thing. Uh, under the stairs, th there's a, a table and a crystal ball. Crystal ball? It, it, it's strange, I know, but some psychics use a, a pan of oil, and I use a crystal ball. It, it helps if you're trying to find somebody precisely. <sighs> okay, Joe, you take care of the little table and I'll get the crystal ball. Okay. Take it easy, take it easy. You're supposed to be in the door. Okay, nobody's gonna hurt you, okay? We're almost done here, just be calm. You're gonna be fine. Calm down, calm down. I'm gonna take your gag off, all right? Okay, stay still. This is gonna hurt just a little bit. There you go, now just stay calm. We're gonna leave soon, we just need some info from your fiance. My fiance? Oh, 
I spilled the beans. I mean, your boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. I'm his real estate agent. I just sold him this house. I just came to check up on him. He's not your boyfriend? You sold him this house? How long ago did he move here? Answer me! About a week ago, he came down from Vancouver. Son of a bitch. You're awake. I was worried you weren't just gonna die on me. You son of a bitch! Hey, be quiet. I mean... You don't want me to have to start googling which body parts you need the least. God damn you. God damn me? How many people have you hurt in your lifetime? You did that to my daughter. How could you do that to her? You're sick! I'm sick? Just you tied to this chair is already making the world a better place. She was innocent! No, your daughter was cruel, like you. Very cruel. I went to school with your daughter. And I saw her at that party of yours and... Uh, I mean, she was always beautiful. You? You went to school with her? Yeah. <laughs> I went there on a scholarship. I was a bit of a weird kid. Do you know what it's like being a weird kid in a private rich school? It's harder to pretend to be normal when you're a teen. You know, but you know about that, right? Being one thing and pretending to be harmless. Oh, you fucking pussy. That was high school. She got me expelled. I used to just sit in class and stare at her. She was so beautiful, you know. And then she she noticed. She noticed me. And then she would laugh at me and tease me about it. But I was okay with that. I could handle that. But then one day, I'm in class and I get a call to my locker. And the principal's there. And he says, open up your locker for me. So I do. And somehow, your daughter managed to get an ounce of cocaine into my locker. And I was 18, so the joke was hugely on me. Do you know what they do to an 18 year old in prison? I don't fucking care. Well, then you really are like your daughter. She didn't care either. She gloated to me before I went to court. She laughed at me. Didn't come forward. So I saw her at the party and I thought, well, the least she can do is spend a year in a cell herself. Treated her good. Oh. 
So you just tied her up and put her in the basement and killed her. You sick fuck. I didn't plan on killing her. Last night was going to be our special night. I, I put rose petals downstairs and I, I made us dinner. I even untied her arms. And that was a mistake. She tried to escape. She hit me. So I, I pushed her and then she hit her head against the wall really hard. She didn't move after that. But it was an accident, you know? Accidents happen. And I mean, yeah, she had a mouth in her. She just, she, she wouldn't stop, you know? I thought about having sex with her, but she was such a mess. Fuck you! Fuck you! And that woman downstairs, I mean, yeah, she's just a real estate agent. Uh, I think she keeps popping in. I think that she might have a bit of a crush on me. But I couldn't have her telling you guys that I just moved in here a couple weeks ago. I mean, that would look way too suspicious. And I figure if, if you would learn that, well, I probably would have got tortured a lot more. You know? And you guys already tortured me a lot. Like, uh, uh, that really fucking hurt. You're alive, and my daughter's dead. How fucking fair is that? Yeah. But I guess that's life, you know? It's unpredictable. <coughs> hey, Joe! Well, I was just giving Mr. Zambrelli some closure. Fuck you. You have no idea what kind of shitstorm you bring in on yourself. Really? Because I was sort of hoping that we could just, you know, we could all move on and get over this. I mean, I know you guys are bad guys, but I I'm willing to forgive and forget. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. All you have to do is promise me that you'll never hurt me and that I'll never see you again and I'll let you go. Take these cuffs off me. I'll walk away from here and you'll never see me again. Hmm. One more, say one more time and just look me right in the eye while you say it, right? That way I know that you're telling me the truth. I promise that I will walk away from here and you will never see me again if you take these handcuffs off. Okay. I'm sorry, Joe. But you let Danny cut off my nipples. Your best friend and your daughter are within 24 hours. That is a rough day. Let's get this over with. Come here. And when you do it, I want you to look me in the eye, you fucking coward. Are you ready then, Mick? Oh yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Zambrelli. Goodbye, kid. <laughs> Fuck you, schoolboy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Away from here as you can and don't look back. Okay? It's okay. We're all just assholes. Go.